Do you have kids? If so, how many? Yes, I do have kids. I have four kids. Uh, I have um, three daughters and a son. So, yeah. They're fans. <laughs> Was Jay's voice always planned to be that high? Well, when I auditioned for Jay, it was the idea to keep him young and excited and excitable because I was trying to match what the character description said. So whether or not his voice was high and always planned that way, that's kind of how I how I auditioned it. And thankfully, that's uh, that's that's what they liked. So, yeah, I'm happy to say that my high pitched, excited voice got me the job. Yeah. By the way, I just love the way you do Jay's voice high like that. It just makes the character more enjoyable and funny. <laughs> like he sounds like a little a little kid in a way because of that high pitched voice, but I love it. That's what makes him cute and lovable and in my opinion, the best ninja. <laughs> Which animal sidekick would Jay have? I think Jay would probably like to have a cheetah. And I say that because cheetahs are lightning fast. And of course, Jay, master of lightning, likes to go fast. So yeah, I would say a cheetah. Cheetahs are quick. Like I, I can't imagine Jay hanging out with like a sloth or a turtle. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love sloths. I love turtles. I'm just saying, they might not be for Jay. <laughs> oh, really? A cheetah? I. That's not something I would picture Jay with as an animal sidekick, but I kind of get it because lightning fast. Lightning is fast, and but I do. I like that idea though. Maybe he should start out with a. Uh, cheetah cub first before he gets into the older um because i feel like he would be a little bit more scared of a older cheetah <laughs> are you team marvel or dc i i gotta say i really i really gravitate towards marvel um it's a really wonderful cinematic experience for me every time i get to sit down and watch something and i know there are people that have some really strong opinions one way or the other and that's okay you're allowed to have them it just so happens my opinion i i, I prefer the marvel cinematic universe so me specifically i am team marvel i love um anything marvel i've seen all of the marvel movies um from iron man all the way to Spider-Man No Way Home, and I love, love that, um, and also I have a whole bunch of Marvel stuff, I have a Funko Pop, I have like four or five Marvel t-shirts, it's insane, <laughs> I have a problem. If you could, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think I'd want to live anywhere else than where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm on a beautiful little hobby farm. I live in British Columbia. I, you know, get to enjoy, you know, the outside fairly often. There's, you know, woods all around. So, yeah, I really like, I like where I am. Thanks. But uh, if I had to choose, oh, I would say it would be wonderful to live in one of those beautiful European castles. I don't know where, but I think a castle would be really nice. Just saying. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as an answer. And I would probably also say for myself, I would say probably in Canada or, but me in Canada. But I don't really like the cold. So me, I would say... Maui, Hawaii, or um, or I would just stay here in California. I love California. It's amazing. <laughs> Since you did Big Time Movie, did you ever get a chance to meet the boys? I'm so curious. I want to know. I love Big Time Rush. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely uh, mentioned this before. The boys and I got to spend uh, quite a lot of time together on set. And we hung out here and there after uh, after shooting was done for the day. Um, yeah, they seemed they seemed like a really nice bunch of guys. So, yeah, thumbs up to uh, Big Time Rush. 
Um, oh my gosh, that's so cool. My two favorite things, Ninjago and, of course, my favorite Ninjago voice actor with my favorite boy band of all time. Like, Big Time Rush is back, and they are doing amazing. They went on tour in December and released a new single, and I'm in love more than ever, and I need to see them. <laughs> Has anybody ever noticed you in public? Yes. Yes. Uh, I got mistaken for uh, David Harbour in public. Someone pulled over on their bicycle and, and basically, you know, out of breath was like, Hopper, hey, what are you, what are you doing here, man? You shooting a movie? <laughs> so, yeah, people have noticed me in public, but they think I'm David Harbour. So that's uh, that's kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. I feel so bad. If I saw you anywhere, I would actually recognize that it's you that you voice Jay because, well, one, because I'm the one interviewing you, and two, because I've been a huge fan of Ninjago since 2011, ever since I was 10, so... Wasn't it yeah. hard for you recording Seedown, especially with the emotional scenes and that tying to the ending scene of the season? Um, I wouldn't say it was hard. Uh, it was it was challenging in the way that being sad, you know, for someone that you love is is challenging because I have a lot of love for Jay and for Nia and to see their relationship be stressed in this way and put to the test in this way is definitely sad for me as as the actor and I really feel for them but I also try to remember that with every character I, I try to do justice to their experience and to their journey so as difficult as it might be for me as the actor it really is you know hard because I feel like I'm watching a friend suffer um, you know hopefully that makes sense and answers the question yeah, I kind of figured that because there are some voice actors that do roles like that where it actually bugs them and they actually do get emotional. And myself, I'm not a, I mean, obviously I'm not a voice actor or anything, but um, I just got emotional watching that. And because it feels like you connect with the characters in a certain way and it's insane. But I got emotional when Nia died. What was your favorite line of Jay that you ever had to record? Um, I would definitely revert back to the waffles versus pancakes and abs comment. That was that was a great line. That was very fun, very memorable. That's an amazing quote I, or line. I love that. Any quote that Jay says just makes me laugh, especially when he's being sarcastic. I love his sarcastic. I love the sarcastic lines that you say as Jay. It's It just makes me smile and laugh. Like the one where he says, uh, Oh, you're right. What was I thinking? There goes any hope Mora couldn't find the two. We're not alone. Yay! Now we're gonna have to fight him again. Sure, we got our tails handed to us last time, but you'll never know in the future, because Ninja never quit. <laughs> that just makes me laugh. I asked your friend, dear friend Brent, and he came through, and he asked, what has been your hardest part recording by yourself during COVID? Uh, and question number 20. What has been the hardest part recording by yourself during COVID? Great question. Um, COVID's been hard in a lot of ways for a lot of people from all over the world, many different walks of life, many different, um, many different jobs. Um, everybody's been affected for sure. For me as a performer, it's been really difficult because our work is our fun. It's our playtime. It's also our way to earn a living. And on top of that, it's kind of like our social time with our peers also. So when you grow up in a voice world where your community is at work and it's everybody all together all the time, you kind of get to a place where you 
you come to rely on those people and that time together. So that's been really hard is not having the people and not having that time together. There's so many wonderful creative people that I get to work with and now they're on Zoom when I see them, which is still nice, but it's not the same as all of us being together in a room to record, to joke together, laugh together, you know, and I, I, I also don't get to appreciate other people's wonderful performances, you know, so um yeah, that's a that's a big that's a big source of disappointment, I'll say. But uh I know that if we all, you know, hang in there and do our best we will get back to group records just as soon as we can so i seriously can't imagine what that has been for you it must be hard not being able to see your friends and doing what you love with them and ex experiencing it with them and i hope you guys get to all record together soon <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Michael Adamthwaite. Thank you so much for joining me here on Ninjago TV with our special host, Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for getting in touch with me and sending me your interview questions. I had a great time answering them. Hopefully your video works out the way you hoped. And uh, yeah, I'll just say thanks again. Nice to see everybody. And uh, yeah, check me out on the Blue Curtain Show on YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, so that's it for today's video well it's a two-parter for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this and please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified every time i upload a new youtube video and go check out michael's youtube channel it's the blue curtain show and follow him on his social media as well i'll put that in the description below and subscribe to his channel like i said um and yeah um and michael thank you so much for doing this for me and with me i really enjoyed interviewing you with these questions and just talking about them and getting to know you better and um yeah until next time bye guys ninja go